Part 2, Chapters 22 through 26 of This Giddy Globe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kevin Fink. This Giddy Globe by Oliver Hereford. Chapter 22 Canada. Canada, with the exception of Mexico, is the only part of North America not ruled by the Irish. In former days it was a popular health resort for frenzied financiers who wished to retire from the private life. It is now a still more popular resort for Americans suffering from thirst. Though next-door neighbors and rivals in business, and, what is still more trying, near relatives, Canada and the United States are the best of friends. For over a hundred years there has not been so much as a picket fence or a policeman, much less a patrol or fortification, on the borderline between the two countries. Canada has not, like her sister Columbia, severed home ties. She is perfectly happy under the parental roof, earns her own living, has a latch key, and stays out as late as she pleases, and has never been able to understand why girls leave home. Though differing in many respects, the United States and Canada have so much in common and are so nearly of the same age and size that, in any musical comedy of nations, the two might easily pass for a sister turn. The inhabitants of Canada are the most moral and patriotic people in the world, and their army is second to none in bravery and won the World War. Chapter 23 Great Britain If you look carefully under the upper left-hand corner of the map of Europe, you'll find a small pink island no bigger than the state of Idaho. But a country must not be judged by its size. The planet Jupiter is twelve times as large as this gay globe of ours, and has eight private moons of its own. But for all that, Jupiter is not a desirable spot for lovers, being for the most part molten and somewhat spotty. This little pink island is Great Britain, the little mother of one-fourth of all of the countries of the globe, including the United States. The English people, or, if one must be accurate, the British, are the most to and froward people in the world. Like the bear in the fable, when they are tired of going to and fro, they reverse the process and go fro and to. With Bibles and bathtubs and ballots and beer and hope and hygienics, they girdle the sphere. In every quarter of the globe they have planted seeds of self-government, which today are blossoming into an English-speaking union under the British and American flags that embrace one-fourth of the surface of the earth. The climate of England is temperate. Its air is not like that of the United States compared to Champagne. London, the capital, is famous for its fogs. This is due to the absence of skyscrapers. London is also the center of that vicious heritage of the Victorian era, respectability. For any enjoyable degree of latitude, the Londoner must go to Paris, Vienna, or Budapest, and other capitals, which in turn take their degrees of longitude from London or Greenwich. This picture shows the famous rock of Gibraltar, inscribed with the French motto of British respectability, On y soit qui mal done into English. The principal products of Great Britain are beef, bishops, banks, and barometers. The inhabitants of England are the most moral and patriotic people in the world, and their army is second to none in bravery and won the world war. Chapter 24. Scotland. A mountainous, peaty region in the northern part of Great Britain, the dew distilled from the Scotch mountains, flavored with the peat of the valleys, is highly prized by the natives, not only of Scotland, but of all the English-speaking countries of this giddy globe. The inhabitants are a tall, barb-wiry, music-loving, pious, and joke-fearing race, fond of loud plaids and still louder songs. Their tall, spare frames have given rise to the term bony, or bonny, Scotland, supposed by some to be derived from bonnet, the national headgear. The principal products of Scotland are porridge, parsons, and pilbrokes. The inhabitants of Scotland are the most moral and patriotic people in the world, and their army is second to none in bravery and won the world war. Chapter 25. Ireland. Ireland is the land of the Irish bull, a paradoxical bovine whose cross-eyed horns can toss a British commonplace in two directions at once. The population of Ireland consists chiefly of absentee landlords and immigrants to the United States. They are ruled by two absentee governments, a parliament at Westminster and an itinerant president. The country is infested with absentee snakes. It is believed that the serpent who tempted Eve from the way he had with the women was one of these absentee snakes. Strabo, the Greek geographer who visited Ireland long before St. Patrick, describes the inhabitants as more savage than the Britons, feeding on human flesh and enormous eaters, deeming it commendable to devour their deceased fathers. Strabo evidently attended a wake and miscalculated the strength of the national beverage. The principal products of Ireland are potatoes, 
pugilist patriots footnote the term patriot is derived from the two greek words pat a patronymic and riot a national pastime in the footnote poutine and bernard shaw the inhabitants of ireland are the most moral and patriotic people in the world and their army is second to none in bravery and won the world war chapter twenty six wales see the welsh rabbit he is bread on cheese or cheese on bread whichever you may please although he's tough he looks so mild who'd think that a strong man from this small beast would shrink carolyn wells wales is the home of the welsh bards so called because the language in which they are written which resembles a mixture of czech chinese celtic and choctaw is barred from the concert and operatic stage the most famous products of Wales are the Welsh Rabbit, the Prince of Wales, and Lloyd George. The Welsh Rabbit, born in a chafing disc and prolific as his namesake of Australia, has spread all over the giddy globe and has been a potent factor in keeping the world awake. Lloyd George, too, strange parallel, was born in a political chafing dish and has been an even more powerful factor in keeping the world awake. Let us hope that the Prince of Wales, bless him, will follow in the footsteps of this illustrious pair and live to keep the world awake long after this geography has gone into its hundred thousandth edition. The prince has been immortalized in the following lines. Hooray! cried the kitten, hooray! As he merrily set the sail, I sail o'er the ocean to-day to-day to look at the Prince of Wales. O oh, kitten, pause at the brink, and think of the angry gales. Ah, yes, cried the kitten, but think, O oh, think of the Prince of Wales. But, kitten, I cried, dismayed, if you live through the angry gales, you know you will be afraid to look at the Prince of Wales. Said the kitten, no such thing. Why should he make me wince? If a cat may look at a king, a kitten may look at a prince. End of Part 2 Chapter 22 through 26 Recording by Kevin Vink